welcome to the Dark Knight of the Soul series, series one. Let's begin at the beginning and let's call this the Human Caterpillar. This is the beginning. Then we're going to take you through Depression and Cocoon. And then we're going to go into the transformation of the butterfly into your higher self or true self or real self, whatever suits. But whatever way, there will be a tremendous difference between Caterpillar to the true self, the A to B me of Beamism. Hello and welcome to the Dark Knight of the Soul series. We're going to be starting with the normal caterpillar, the meaning of life. See, here we fell straight away because not many people know or understand what is the meaning of their life. Where are they going? Who are they being? How are you feeling? Why did you marry the person that you married? Why do you meet the people in your life? Why do some people hurt you? Why do some people love you? Why do you hurt some people? And why do you decide to love a certain person? The main thing that I've discovered in this journey of life is the human way, the caterpillar way, can be very destructive. It has no understanding of itself. It just devours everything, eats everything in its pathway. So the caterpillar basically just does what it normally does. Does the caterpillar know that it's going into transformation? That we will never know. But we know when we are going into the transformation. For any of you out there that are experiencing the dark night of the soul, you can class it as depression. Depression means the furthest point away from who you thought you were and how you used to be. Depression gives you this idea that your life is finished, it's over. Because you cannot find the vibration or the frequency or the energy to who you used to be. We hear many people in depression say that I just want to be how I used to be. My answer to that is that person that you used to be is the person that's gotten you depressed in the first place. So do we really need to go back to that being? No, is the answer. Because we have experienced everything as that being and it's come to an end. There's nothing there. There's nothing more. And this is why people will find that the pain or the pain body that they're feeling leaves you with suicidal thoughts. This is inevitable because there is a breakdown in this journey that is so destructive that the only way it seems is to think about killing yourself. And I had them thoughts too. Very destructive. But being me, being the warrior, being a being that was starting to listen to the thoughts, were they actually mine or was something else influencing me? to kill myself. There's a very fine line from an influence, especially from Dark Spirit. This is why they call it the Dark Knight of the Soul, because when the Dark Knight of the Soul kicks in, you are vulnerable. And as your old self starts to drift away, it enables the influence of spirit to be able to jump into you, to take over. And the reason why I say that is because the dark night of the soul energy is there to break down all your illusions. It's to break down your personality and it's to break down and look at and heal your experiences. So it takes away what is false. It takes away only what you have learned from beings before you. You come to the planet and you basically just fitted in. The dark night of the soul says to you, we are not fitting in anymore. I am done with this journey. I need to know who I am. I need to know what is my meaning and my purpose. What can I achieve whilst being here? So in the dark night of the soul, 
It is a battle, I kid you not, but it is a battle worth fighting, and fight you shall take. What you're fighting with is the old self with the new self. As the new self starts to present itself, the old self will cling on to your old beliefs, your old values, even your old friends. But when the soul kicks in, it's gonna take over. The whole thing is gonna change. You may be a meat eater, and then all of a sudden you fancy turning into a vegetarian. You may be a very material being, and then realize that nothing material is even worth saving. But the only thing that is worth saving is yourself. This is the hardest work and the hardest job you will ever encounter. But it's a job worth taking. It's a job worth investing because you're investing in the evolution of yourself. Now you may think that you are alone. You are not. 12, 15 years ago, a wave of energy affected this planet. It swept through the souls of many people to awaken. But first, they had to go through a depression. And it was through this depression, see, that you start to ask for help. Now, you may not ask for help on the outside, but you're talking to yourself now, and you're asking for help inside your head. You're asking God to help you out, to save you, to give you an answer, a message, something that will get you through this dark night. And these dark nights can last a month, two months, three years, five years, maybe even a lifetime. But I knew within me that I could work with myself just like you can work with anyone else. And so therefore, I knew there was only one being that knew me more than anyone. That was me. So I used my own intelligence, my own pain, and I started to write and to work out what had gone wrong. Where did I go wrong? Many questions, no answers. But as you go through this journey, see, you start writing these questions and the answers come. And every time you get an answer right, your body will respond. Your soul responds and says, yes, you're on the right track. Depression is such a low point. Your soul wants you to be the highest point, the highest value that you could ever be, the highest level of consciousness, which means the way that you think and the way that you feel and the way that your awareness to who you are and the planet and beings is working at 100% potential. You are here to express. You are here to experience. You are here to find out your gifts, to be the gifts. You are here to make the world a better place. We all are. It's just that we got trapped by the material world and the world that was existing way before we turned up. But the awakening from the caterpillar into the cocoon of darkness is truly a transformational journey. Just like the caterpillar goes into the cocoon, it's in the darkness. But we'll just stay with the caterpillar for the moment because if you're 40 years old, there's 40 years that need to be analyzed and looked at, understood, and then healed. Healed means that you've identified and worked with a solution and an idea that everything that happened to you happened for a reason. Because everything in your past, as the caterpillar, remember, it has got you to the point of who you are today, which is in the dark night of the soul. So. Once we get through this dark night of the soul, you will be able to look back at yourself as the caterpillar and all of your experiences and see that there was a divine plan in action. The dark night of the soul, see, makes it very aware for you to see. How many of you think life is weird? Some strange things are happening. Weird things. Thinking of people and they ring finding yourself going to places that you basically didn't want to go to, but you felt compelled to go and discovered something, saw something, heard something. 
There is a lot going on when the divine or your soul wants your attention, your jobs, your lifestyle, everything will disappear. But this is where the ego self is going to cling on. It's not going to allow you to become. Strange I know, but that's your old program. They're your old thoughts. They're your old ways. Think about it for a moment. It's inevitable. If you're trying to let go of something and you're trying to become someone else, then your other voice will try and say to you, what are you doing that for? What are you talking like that for? Why do you want to go there? Don't be daft. What, are you an idiot? You're not a man to that. You'll never do it. You'll never get there. It's impossible. Your own voice of programming will talk you out of it. And it is that old voice that turns around and says to you, oh, well, it's over then, isn't it? You might as well kill yourself off and just get it over and done with. Be careful of that voice in the dark night of the soul. It's dangerous. But in hindsight, the human pathway is dangerous. Your upbringing was dangerous. Your experience was dangerous. Take away the word dangerous. What have you got? Fearful. We have been led through life with a bucket load of fear. The dark night of the soul wants you to fear so much. So much of yourself you will fear. You will fear going out. You will fear going on a job interview. You will fear change. You will fear love. You will fear relationships. You will fear your parents and your friends. You will fear life. You will fear your thoughts and you will fear your feelings. So it's just one word. The dark night of the soul takes you into fear. And there's a real good reason. Because the dark night of the soul wants you to understand the power of fear. It is a powerful emotion. It is a powerful feeling. And it is a powerful trickster. But it's just one word and it's called fear. Depression is an element of fear. You fear, where am I going? What am I doing? Why did I get into this place? Where is my life? Where is my job? Where am I gonna earn money? Who am I gonna find? Who am I gonna love? Who's gonna want me? Who will like me? What will others think? What will others say? These are all fear-based human programs. Your soul doesn't want any part of that anymore. Your soul wants you to understand fear. It wants you to delve into that fear until you are so scared that you fear fear itself. Healing is when you can have a level of communication, an intelligent communication with your fears. Once you can find that within you and talk to yourself and fear with the respect it needs, then fear will talk to you. Fear will answer your questions because I tell you for why. Fear is your greatest teacher. Get to love your fear and you will become the butterfly. But not only will you become the butterfly, you will become the teacher of the dark night of the soul. Because you've learned from darkness. Learn from all dark spirits. Learn from all dark entities. Learn from your darkened mind. Learn from your darkened emotions. Heal them. Understand them. Become friends with them. Because the real answer to your fears are this. Your fear just wants to be loved. It wants to be understood and it wants you to understand it. This is the reason of depression, the dark night of the soul, and the level of awareness and consciousness that you communicate with yourself. Looking at the word human, there is no real identity or truth behind you are a human. When you look at life and you look at what human behavior is all about it doesn't take long to see the state of the planet 
It doesn't take long to see who is in power. It doesn't take long to see the poverty, the war, the destruction, the killing, the raping, the abusing, the control, illness. They're all human faculties. And being human, you will think like one, act like one, feel like one, and die like one. You cannot escape the human programming, but you can. Beamism is just that. Be me is, I want to be me. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to understand me. I'm going to listen to me. I'm going to feel me. And I'm going to have a great chat to myself, to my darkness, and to my soul. Because your soul wants you to listen. And the only way that you can listen is when you're in the dark night of the soul. The soul will turn around and say to you, now I have your attention. In the dark night of the soul, one of the things that you need to pay attention to is your dreams. Your dreams are coming from your soul. I think dream is the wrong word. Maybe message is the better word to be able to interpret symbolically what your dreams mean. You may be experiencing lots of fearful dreams. Being chased, being killed, fighting, dark tunnels, moving through doors. That's an important one because you may go through a door that you think is familiar and then when you open the door you'll find yourself in a completely different room, maybe even a different street, maybe in a different country. And so therefore the fear gets to you that you are lost. And so therefore you try to backtrack, you try to go back through the doors and every time you go through the doors you seem to be lost. You never seem to find yourself back in the right place of where you started. You may have dreams when you've set out with a couple of friends and then all of a sudden you've kind of lost them friends and then you try to find them friends and then you can feel the fear, loss, fear starts to overtake your body in the dream. But there are great messages in these dreams. I paid a lot of attention to the feelings of the dreams and how did it make me feel. And this was the most important things. It just didn't add up in the beginning. But the more I was looking at it, and the more I started to heal myself, the dreams started to change. So there are lots of things that's hidden within your subconscious mind in your emotions and in your experiences and your soul is clearing it all out. It's like your soul is in your filing cabinet and it's going through the cabinet and taking out the files and looking at it and say you need to look at this, need to look at this one and we need to throw this one out once it's done. This is what the soul does. It clears you out and it's as simple as that. But what is it clearing you out to become? This is the answer helps you to become natural. You're looking for naturalness so that you can do, feel, think, get, act, laugh, joke, think in the way that it's just natural. There is no holding back. There is no loss of expression through stopping yourself from expressing yourself. You're here to express yourself. Far too many people are so lost, they're so confused because they want to express, but they don't know how to. It's like the talented singer can sing in the bedroom, but can't sing in the pub or in a club or in front of anybody, but has an amazing voice. You got given that amazing voice for a reason. Not everyone's got an amazing voice. It's the same for me with these recordings. Hairdressing for me was the greatest gift the greatest talent and the greatest job I thought anyone could have. But now I talk like this. I don't talk in hairdressing language. I talk in a completely different language. And it's the right language. It's a great language. So what you're looking for is the language of your soul. The language, the right words, the right thoughts, the right feelings and the right speech. Communicating is one of the most difficult things. I would like to say probably 85% of people, maybe more, do not know how to communicate. 
They don't know how to communicate with their anger, their frustrations and their anxiety. They don't know how to communicate in a pub or at a party. They don't know how to communicate with their parents when they need to say something. Why? Because of fear of rejection or being laughed at or not being liked. Half of the time we're personators. We're just mimicking someone else. We're just listening to their story, copying their story, going along with their story. But in all honesty, your soul wants you to have your story. So what is your story? What is your greatest story? You have one life. This is it. The language in your head determines whether you're expressing or you're imploding in darkness and depression. Depression is a great way of being able to communicate. It is the hardest form of communication because things are happening to you that you're not quite sure of. You're not aware of what is happening. You've got a lot of questions and you need answers. And you need to find them answers within yourself. They are there. You just need to get rid of the crap that you're hiding, that you're holding yourself back with, that you're denying yourself the rights to be, to live, to laugh, and to love. We find many people, they believe love is a weakness. And of course, we hear many people turn around and say, love hurts. Love only hurts when there is a weakness. True love doesn't hurt. But see, what you're trying to think is, love is with somebody, the opposite partner. But true love is with self. To enjoy the self, to love the self, to understand the self, and to be natural with the self. This is love. How do you speak to yourself? How do you feel about yourself? What do you say about yourself? This is love. Do you love the way that you are? Do you love the way that you feel? Do you look at the greatest relationship on the planet and say, wow, this is love. Life is love, not humans. Life itself, go to that point, go to that vision and see life as your relationship because you're having an experience with the greatest relationship on earth. This is love and to love it. Because if you don't, this is where we fall short and feel and think that life is no good. But in all honesty, what you're saying is, you're no good. Maybe your past, your experiences, your parents, all told you that you was no good. So what did you do? Probably followed that rule. You probably was no good. And in the end, you totally think that you're no good now this changes your attitude, this makes you think bad of yourself, it makes you think bad of others, and it puts a chip on your shoulder. You walk around with judgments, you think that everyone else is doing well and you're not, you think the world owes you something, and it doesn't. The dark night of the soul is showing you that you have something for the world, something to give. Many beings on this planet, they just take. They take from life and they take from people. Most people in the dark night of the soul are givers. So therefore, you must have something to give. Now, what's the very importance of something to give? And the top answer is of yourself. It doesn't have to be a book. It doesn't have to be some amazing creative painting or some invention. To give to the world is to express yourself in love in naturalness, in love and laughter. This is happiness. To feel free from the burdens of yourself. To feel free from your past programming. To feel free to be you. But the soul is asking you, what is the true you? How do you want to be? What do you want to do? How do you want to see? These are the great questions the soul is taking you towards. The dark night of the soul is a journey. It's an experience, not an illness, as everyone is getting you to believe. It's an illness. It's only an illness because you're not fitting in 
to the psychopaths and to the illness that's already here. So to escape the human herd, yes, that looks mental, but in all honesty, your soul don't think it is. Your soul knows it's the right way because it wants to separate you. It wants to define you. It wants to create you. It wants to show you your full potential, your healing abilities, your gifts of awareness and truth, not a load of bullshit and lies and illusions that just keep you trapped. This is the darkness. The soul awakens and shows you the darkness and tries to deliver the truth. But once you understand the darkness, truth comes. And this is the saying, and the truth shall set you free. Another point in this journey is, many of you may be having visions of Jesus. Most of you are probably not even religious. I too had the same visions. Amazing, incredible. I wasn't religious. No idea in religious studies. No interest in Jesus neither. Great story, great feats of healing. Don't know too much about it. So in your dreams, you may be seeing visions of Jesus in whatever way. Now the reason why this happens is, is because Jesus is the pinnacle. He is the David Beckham, isn't he? Once you're a David Beckham and you score goals like David Beckham, then every young footballer wants to be like David Beckham. When you deliver a message like Jesus, then of course every spiritual seeker seeks to be like Jesus because they too would like to love and they too would like to heal. So he has raised the bar as Beckham has raised the bar. It's just in a different category. But when the dark night of the soul kicks in, it's not interested in David Beckham. It's interesting in who was the greatest man or the greatest story that delivered a simple truth. And that simple truth was know thyself. Once you know thyself, the rest becomes easy. Divinity flows, healing is natural. You can raise the dead, especially your own self, because this is what the Dark Knight is teaching you. He's teaching you to raise yourself up from your deathbed and to become as Christ was. Jesus was a true warrior. He probably spent many a nights wondering what to do. The messages that he was receiving from his innermost self, from his divine self, his naturalness. He was communicating with himself. He saw what his village was all about. He saw how the people were. He saw how men treated women. He saw the taxation of Jerusalem and how cruel the beings are. He wanted to make a difference. Once he put that thought form into his mind, the rest became history. Because soon as you ask the correct questions, your body, your infinite cosmic body, will find you the answers. You have to understand that your body is an incredible instrument. It is an instrument that cannot be replicated. You are a one-off epic story, a walking, talking, creative work of art. And your mind is destroying that. It's like buying a Rolls Royce that runs on petrol and you fill it up with diesel. Not a good move, really. That's the same with you. Your body is a creation, a divine creation, a godly creation. And if you don't fill it up with the right words, with the right thoughts and the right meanings, it is not going to run properly. It can be as simple as that. So pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to the messages of Jesus. Yes, there are points when you really do want to tell everyone, but you know that it's mad and you wonder, who can you tell? You can't. So this is why writing is very important. Write down your messages, write down your visions, and most importantly, write down how you felt. How did it make you think the next morning? Did you look at it and think, wow, it's just a dream? Or did you look at it and think, no, that's a divine message. It's showing me something. It's telling me something. I can't understand it at the moment, but I'm sure it will make sense. And believe me, it will make sense. Because when you start to see life symbolically, that means you're out of the dream. To see your life in a way that you've never seen it before is very strange. And it's very hard to tell anyone. 
especially a doctor or a psychiatrist, or your parents. You can't tell anyone about this symbolic vision that keeps happening because your life is seen in chapters, A to B, from B to C, from C to D. It's like this transition of, it's showing you something. There is a pattern now, and you can't quite grasp it because the ego self, the human self, is trying to deny it. He's trying to deny what is happening. But the soulful self in the dark night of the soul can only give it to you symbolically. It doesn't want to spend too much time with these long sentences of words that you'll never understand. It wants to show you in quick time. And it knows that you're ready to hear it, see it, and understand it, and to rewrite it. Because what you think your life is all about, when the soul awakens you, it's not what you thought it was about at all. Nothing there is resembling what you thought. So the dark night of the soul and your dreams and your visions of Jesus are helping you to rewrite your story. Now, what does that mean to rewrite it? It means to review it, go over it, see the meaning of it, step away from it and look at it. Almost like watching a film with the sound off. Just watch the film and see what the characters are doing. Sense it within yourself of how they are acting, because life is an act. Your feelings are the drama of that act. And when you turn the sound off, it's like turning your feelings down. To be a visionary is to understand the journey without the emotions, or if there is going to be one emotion, then let that be of naturalness. Once you can understand the full workings of natural nurse, then the journey starts to flow. Because how many of you are looking at life and think, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know how I got into this mess. I don't know why I'm so depressed. I don't know why my parents were like that. I don't know why I didn't like school. I don't know why every woman I've been out with has cheated on me. I don't know why every woman I've been out with, I've cheated on them. I don't know why I'm such a liar or why beings are liars? These are all great questions that you need to find the answers to. Other than that, life is pointless. It has no meaning, no drive, no divinity, no message, nothing. Why should we live a life feeling, thinking that life is worth nothing? Wow, life really is a well factor. But you can only see that, see, once you get through. You gotta get through the dark night. It's a journey, as I said, and there uh, is an ending to that journey. But you know what I'd like to say? The longer the journey takes, then the bigger your mission. That's the truth of it. The harder it is to piece it together, it means there is a deep, deep rooted message that you came here to the planet with. And when you look at the awakening on this planet, and you look at the state of this planet, then why shouldn't the dark night of the soul all of a sudden want to kick into humans and do something about it to change them, to transform them into great beings? We are in the shift of consciousness. We are changing from one set of values and ideas into another set of values and ideas. What makes you any different? You have been chosen when your dark night of the soul kicks in and says, time to wake up, son. It is time to grab the ball by the horns and discover the true meaning to life and who you are. This is the meaning of life. This is the transformation of life. And this is what you're going to achieve. And your soul is showing you the way. You must become good friends with your soul because your soul is trying to become great friends with you. It wants you to become the one. This is the most important aspect of the dark night of the soul because we are so many different personalities and we have so many different emotional values that go with them different personalities that who are you? Who are you questioning? Who are you answering? And this is the importance of the visions if you're getting them from Jesus is to know thyself. Well, to know thyself is to be the one. That is why I believe they all say that we are searching for the one. We are that one. We just want to be one. We don't want to be many. We want to be the one being. We want to understand the one being. And we want to understand the greatness of that being. 
because there is no greater transformation. There isn't. This is it. So you must honor the fact that you and your soul have come here and you have been chosen to awaken. It has been timed for you to acknowledge yourself, probably for the first time ever, because you've never really stopped and thought about who you are, what you are, what you're doing. So that's unconsciousness. That's just like your dreams, really. You believe that dreams are just a, an unconscious faculty that sort of just goes, well, it's a dream. It doesn't mean anything. But in the dream, there is something there, as I said, that you must listen to, that you must follow, that you must understand as being your greatest asset and the greatest message from your soul. Pay attention to that, become great friends with that, enjoy the soul coming through and guiding you. Listen to that soul as you would do your greatest mate, or even God himself that would come down to you to give you a message. The only way to get to you as a being is to understand your soul. Once you do that and understand that, the caterpillar days will start to end. And this is why the caterpillar days are very important in ending them, understanding them, and grabbing a new piece of life with a new awareness, with a new beginning to who you are.